I would say the situation is mixed um, because the, the South Asian states, particularly um, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh, uh, these three countries have made a conscious decision to send workers abroad on the temporary labor migration regime. There is also a conscious promotion of women's labor migration. Um, so some laws have been made and I would say some laws are good. Uh, there are and those laws which uh, needed amendment, some amendment is going. So the mixed scenario is sometimes the laws are good but not being implemented. Sometimes the laws are very protectionist towards women but they don't protect the, uh, uh, their rights. And uh, finally, when we are talking about migrant workers, it is not only the laws in the countries of origin that are important, it is also extremely important for um, the migrant worker to have good laws in countries of destination. And when we are talking about countries of destination, particularly in the GCC countries, the uh, the laws are not very uh, rights protective towards migrant workers. Because of the nature of the work that they are going for, also because of the way the recruitment is done, because of the processes of migration, there are a lot of vulnerabilities that are built into the system. So, for example, if they are working, and if they are going as a domestic worker in another uh, person's household, they don't have a common language, they do not understand the culture and they work in a private household. So they don't have a community there, they don't have and they cannot contact anybody. So the situation is, let's say if we speak generally, the situation in the, uh, there is very little rights protection at workplace, at the different workplaces. If they have a, so for example, if they have a problem with the employer, if they are facing non-payment of wages, if they are facing overwork, they cannot complain to anybody. It's difficult to use things. So, so workplace rights are, there is very little protection of workplace rights. Secondly, the situation, there are some problems in the recruitment system, in the way that they are doing the migration. So generally, I would say, they are in terms of right protection, there is very low rights protection, so which uh, impacts on the uh, on their situation. So the situation is not very, very worker friendly. I think I would like to end this by saying that in all my years of work, I have been amazed by the strength and the power that women have. Even today, the, despite all the difficulties that women migrant workers in low wage jobs face, they have shown tremendous strength. And in many countries of South Asia, upon return, they are also organizing, they are forming groups, collectives, there are in, in Nepal, we are talking in Nepal now, in, in Nepal, there are groups who have formed, you know, Sramajibi Mahila Sanjal has been created, Returnee Migrant Women Workers groups have been created and they are strong, they are advocating for their own rights. In countries of destination, also they are organizing and there are community volunteers from the countries, they are also supporting them. So I would say if we continue our efforts, if we, if we reflect on what is the problem and what are the uh, opportunities if we if, if we seriously try to analyze and move forward i would say that there is hope that changes can happen i would say the women are at risk not because they are not strong not because they uh, have any problems inbuilt problems the women are facing difficulties 
because of systemic reasons, because of legislative reasons. Particularly if we are talking about governments of countries of origin, they by and large they have not been able to negotiate very well with countries of destination. They do not seem to have a lot of bargaining power with countries of destination. What we have noticed is there is also very little coordination and cooperation among countries of origin. Seems like a competition and like a race to the bottom. So you are sending, suppose uh, one country says our, my, our workers should be getting, let's say, they say $300. Another country comes in, oh, our workers will go for 150 And that brings down the situation. I think there is a lot that needs to be done. Uh, let's uh, start with, um, and, and in this particular area, I think our media, our colleagues in the media have a very big responsibility. Now, when there are problems that the women migrant workers are facing, we from the civil society talk about it. Women who return, they also talk about it. Women in countries of destination also where they have freedom, they talk about it. And that goes out in the media. The hope behind that is if we put out the problems, the problems will get solved. But what happens is by talking exclusively, exclusively about the problems, somewhere the stigmatization also increases. All women who return are seen as abused women, all women who, are, uh, who return are seen by society because our attitude towards women, we, live, we all live in patriarchal societies, our attitude towards women is always a little bit suspicious. If you, what kind of dress she is wearing, how she is, who is she looking at, who is she smiling at, what exactly. So all these things also play a role. So the moment they, uh, these problems are highlighted, this also enhances or aggravates the stigma. So the challenge that media colleagues have here is how can they tell stories that will talk about problems but also talk about the strength of the women, the resistance of the women. How can, what is the way and this is a very, very challenging task for the media because media, you know, they will also have limited space, limited time, but within that, how could they do both? How could they comment on the stories? How could they present the stories in a way that will not put the blame on the woman, that will actually expose the hypocritical value system of our society? So that's the bigger, big challenge that media has today. Finally, I would say our states also have a role in this. They can play a role because in the last 10 years or a little more than 10 years, the increase that, in, that we are seeing in women's labor migration, international labor migration, is because of the policies that our states have created. Because there is an opportunity, that's why women are going. There is a lot of promotion of labor migration that is also happening. Now, all our states have communication outlets. How could they present a strong image of the women? How could they publicly acknowledge that these migrant women are contributing to our economy, that they are contributors to the development of our state. So if there is public acknowledgement of the, the contribution of women to the state, I think that may change the narrative.